In this video, we're going to discuss the overview of Rizal Snow Mitangere. Now, I'll, I'll be showing you some of the books which I think were very influential on Rizal's thought on why he was able to create No Limit uh, It was mentioned in my previous slides that these books were Rizal's interest while he was studying, especially in Ateneo and in Spain. First is The Count of Monte Cristo and the other one is William Tell. So both books try to discuss about oppression of the authority, oppression of the of the government. And then the lead characters there uh, were able to surpass such oppression and oppression by the government. The other one is Uncle Tom's Cabin. The, the, the book is about slavery. So I think these are some of the books which greatly influenced Rizal's thought on why he was able to create No Limit Angre. Ang pinaka number one nandito was The Count of Monte Cristo. It has somehow similarities. Yung paghihigante, the revenge made by the lead character, by the protagonist against those who oppressed him. So similar with Ibarra, Crisosomo Ibarra, uh, transformation of Ibarra, Crisosomo Ibarra to Simon. The name Noli Metangere, Noli Metangere got its name from the Gospel of John as mentioned last time. Um, it there, the, there's a scene there, there's a passage there which says that um, Christ was talking to uh, Mary of Magdalene. Mary of Magdalene was attempting to touch Christ because <clears throat> after Christ's death, Mary Magdalene was able to see Christ. So in other words, Christ was able to resurrect himself from the dead. <clears throat> it means touch me not. So I think there's a, a, a subtle there's a subtle message made by Rizal towards this title. Touch me not. Huwag mo hawakan. Or parang ano eh, parang may, meron siyang pinapatamaan with this name, with this title. Touch me not is also, can be also associated with the word untouchables. So now, who are these untouchables in the society? If I will examine closely, these untouchables would refer to those authority na hindi mo pwedeng i-criticize. And these are the friars. So the friars during Rizal's, Rizal's time are very influential. Influential in terms of the decision making of those who are, of those who govern a specific territory. They are very influential in terms of uh, the decision making of the governor general, the president. So hindi mo sila pwedeng atakihin, especially if they, are, if they commit mistakes, especially if they commit abuses in the society. So I think Rizal uh, got this name. This is only my personal opinion. Um, the reason why Rizal uh, got this name, Touch Me Not, Noli uh, because he was referring to the untouchables of the society, the friars, yung mapang-abusong mga prile. So the, <clears throat> the, no the novel started sa bahay ni Kapitan, San uh, Kapitan Chago or Kapitan Santiago. So dito nagsimula yung, yung story. And then, Maria Clara, which was created by Rizal under the person of, which pertains to the per, per, personhood of Leonor Rivera. Ito si Leonor Rivera na nakatago dun sa karakter ni Maria Clara. So, si Ibarra, dalawang characters dito ni Rizal, si Ibarra, and then si Elias. Nagsimula, the, the, the story started in the house of Kapitan Santiago, Kapitan Chago, and then Lieutenant Guevara, Lieutenant Guevara. Mentioned a story to Rizal, to Ibarra. May sinabing story na si <clears throat> Ibarra, kay Ibarra on how Ibarra's father, Don Rafael, died. Now, the reason why Don Rafael died was because he was defending a boy from a tax collector. From his, um, yung, yung tax collector kasi medyo inaabuso na yung boy na yun. Uh, physical abuse. So, ito yung nare-represent ni Rizal sa lipunan na kung saan mapang-abuso ang mga authorities. So, Don Rafael died because he defended a boy from a tax collector. Ang, ang, ang pinamatay was, I think Don Rafael was in prison and eventually he died there. Uh, Don Rafael, when, when he died, si Don Rafael, 
Yun. Burial niya dapat sa cemetery. Pero pinautos ni Padre Damo so again ito yung pinapakitang uh, influence of the friars to to the authority. Padre Damo so change the burial site of Don Rafael pinatapon siya sa lake. So dito nagalit si Ibarra doon sa pag-uugali ng mga Riley. Sa kabilang side of the story, we have another character under the character of Pilosopong Tasho. Pilosopong Tasho, uh, andun yung word na Pilosopo kasi philosophy here pertains to wisdom. So may mga kaalaman si Tasho na hindi siya uh, mainstream sa lipunan. Si Tasho, in, uh, under the personhood of Pasyano. Rizal's father. Now, according to Tasho, philosopher Tasho, uh, the the kind of education that the society is having during their time was very insignificant. It's because uh, the education during that time was very uh, was being monopolized by religion, by those who are in the religion, by the friars. That's why. Uh, <clears throat> Pilosopong Tasho was also against the plan of Ibarra to create a school for the town kasi si Ibarra dapat ang hindi gumagastos for the school project it has to be the the, the, the government Tasho was against Ibarra's plan with regards to Ibarra's plan to create a school project kasi nga sariling gastos ni, ni Ibarra yun Tasha was complaining on how the method of education was being trans, uh, transmitted to, to students. So, ayaw ni Tasha yung pamamaraan, pamamalakad ng edukasyon na, na ni-implement ng mga friars sa eskwela. Another side of the story under the Noli Metanger was the story of Sisa. Sisa had two kids, Crispin and Basilio. So, Basilio was the elder kasi mas nauna yung letter B. Tapos, it's followed by the letter C. Si Crispin was the youngest. So, si Crispin, Crispin was tortured. He was tortured by the sacristan mayor. He was tortured. He was tortured until Crispin died of torture. So, dito, pwede natin, nat, uh, pwede natin i-refer yung torture incident here dun sa mga uh, places sa mga places and uh, significant events that are associated with those places that were visited by Rizal while he was in Europe especially the Nuremberg uh, Germany or Nuremberg town in Germany so the Nuremberg site reminds you of the tortures made by the church to those who go against their teachings so hindi inalis ni Rizal yung torture dun sa story niya Another character, significant character is Elias. So Elias warned Ibarra, parang ito yung, yung closest character kay Ibarra. Uh, Elias warned Rizal of two possible dangers. Uh, there are assassins, may mga assassins na gustong pumatay kay Rizal. One uh, incident was in the school, the other incident was in the barracks. So, sa school, merong, uh, there, there was a moment that nakamuntik uh, na mamatay si Rizal. Ganon din sa, sa barracks. We're going to see the difference between traditional school and then progressive school. So, again, the reason why I'm going to show you this one is because children, according to Philosopher Tasho, students, especially the children, are complaining. They are losing interest in their studies uh, because they're complaining on how these friars uh, would try to implement their teaching method to these kids kasi ang pinaka teaching method ng mga friars is may pamalo uh, they try to infuse fear and then yung memorization teaching method of the Spanish friars are almost obsolete according to Philosopher Tasho so dito kung ikaw ay isang praile medyo magiging offensive yung dating ni, ng, ng novel pagdating sa'yo now what's the difference between the school that uh, Pasiano wanted to implement in contrast with the school that the friars are implementing. Yung traditional school, this is the school that uh, the school that the friars would try to implement or currently implementing. Itong progressive school naman, ito yung gusto ni, ni Tasho. Tasho na implements sa skwelaan. So under traditional school, 
andun yung concept presented as facts by means of memorization. Learning, learning is teacher-centered. So meaning to say, ang masusunod, ang batas sa classroom ay parate ang ang teacher. Uh, hindi pwede magkamala ng teacher kasi the, the education way of learning is the accordance to the standard of the teacher. For the progressive school, it's student-centered. So nakadepende ang, pro, ang, ang progression, nakadepende ang progression ng lecture, nakadepende ang progression ng input of ideas kung tututunan na ng estudyante. So, meaning to say, the lecture would not progress unless the student would be able to get it. It's more personalized. And then, concepts presented as questions to investigate. So, ibig sabihin, bato lang ng bato ng questions. Yung teacher, nagkakaroon ng participation yung student kasi nga, they are given uh, the liberty to investigate the, problem that were, the problems that were thrown to them. So, mas malalim ang learning compared dun sa traditional school ng mga prile. So, this is the kind of school that Philosopon Tasho wanted to be, wanted to have in the society. So, most likely, ganito rin yung gusto na Rizal. Kaya ayaw niya mag gano'y, ayaw niya na magturo sa after studying medicine in Spain. Ayaw niya na magturo sa bansa natin kasi nga hawak ng mga prile. yung mga eskwelahan natin which is very traditional so ang gusto na Rizal is to have a progressive school and then there was also an incident wherein Elias also saved Rizal sa buaya sa crocodile so Elias was able to save the Ibarra from a crocodile Elias could not subdue it ganito yung nangyari sa sub subdue this is very symbolical again Uh, ang buwaya na pinapataan, pinapatamaan dito, malamang ni Rizal, this is only my personal impression, was those authorities na walang kagutuman, na sobrang uh, ganid sa kapangherian. Yung buwaya na pinapatamaan dito ni Rizal, yung mga politicians, especially those friars, yung mga friars na hindi na bubusog sa lupa. They wanted to obtain a lot of parcels of land. Kasi nga, encomienda system ang bansa natin that time. So, even if originally you own the land under the colonial rule of Spain, of Spain's government, yung lupa mo na pagmamayari mo talaga bago kami dumating, bago dumating ang Espanya, mapupunta sa mga buhayang praile. To think that it's already on your personal property, kayo pa ang magbabayad ng renta. So, ito yung mga buhaya na pinapatamaan Rizal. May mga buaya pa rin hanggang ngayon kasi kahit na ayos yung kalsada natin, sinisira pa rin nila para magkaroon sila ng budget for the expenses uh, of those projects. Gustong iligtas ni Elias si Rizal from that crocodile sa buaya pero hindi niya kayang isubdue. Dahil hanggang ngayon, tama si Rizal hanggang ngayon may mga buaya pa rin. Uh, this pertains to our current system, yung buaya system natin. yung pork barrel. Ano ba yung pork barrel? This is suppose uh, the budget. So, bawat lawmaker, bawat lawmaker may budget. And that lawmaker which represents the province has to spend that money for the development of that province, for the development of that area. Kaya siya binibigyan ng pera para paunla rin yung, yung lugar niya. So, isipin nyo na lang yung mga probinsya na binibigyan. Isipin nyo na lang yung each Lawmaker, each representative in the lower house, members of the House of Representatives. Uh, for the 2020 budget, according to this uh, site, according to this site, September 19 pa naman to, it, this is prior to the pandemic. Dapat magkakaroon ng 100 million each for the representatives uh, for the development of their own provinces. A project. So, anong project ba ang, ang pinapakita? Anong project ba yung binibigay sa atin ng mga lawmakers. Would this project help alleviate our current status as a third world country? No, ano ba mga project na pinap pinapagawa ng mga bawat representatives, ng mga bawat congressman? Basketball court, sidewalk, alsada, waiting sheds. Those are the common projects na kung saan alam mo na 
hindi siya long term eh. These are projects that are not long term na would not suggest any alleviation from your current position as a third world country. Kaya patuloy tayong maging in third world country dahil sa mga buwayang congressman na hindi marunong mag-isip ng tamang proyekto. Tama si Rizal, tama si Elias, kahit anong gusto mong isubdue yung buaya, hindi niya kayang isubdue kasi hanggang ngayon ay mga buaya pa rin. Now, let's examine the story of Elias. Elias is also under the character of Rizal, or per person of Rizal. So, si Elias here, uh, masama rin yung ano eh, masama rin yung background ni Rizal, uh, ni, ni Elias. Now, si yung lolo ni Elias, the grandfather of Elias, was accused of burning a warehouse. Ito yung employers, uh, employer ni, ni, ng lolo ni Elias. So, he was wrongly accused. So, makikita natin dito yung parallelism sa Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, mali yung allegation na binigay dun sa lolo ni Elias. Tapos, the lolo of Elias was flogged or nilatigo. Nilatigo sa public hanggang sa mamatay. Kung hindi pa rin may iwasan yung torture. Torture na, 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 na nabasa ni Rizal from his previous books, from his previous readings. Or the Lola, the Lola of Elias, doesn't have any choice but to be a prostitute. Nag-resort to prostitution. Dahil nga, wala nang breadwinner dun sa pamilya niya hanggang sa mamatay yung asawa niyang may sakit. Dahil dun sa paglalatigo, walang nakikitang paraan yung Lola ni Elias but to resort to prostitution as, uh, as a way to for them to have a daily resource, a daily livelihood. Grandmother ni Elias, nagkaroon ng dalawang anak, si Balat at saka yung tatay ni Elias. This is the eldest, this is the youngest, yung tatay ni Elias. The eldest, <clears throat> the eldest became a, a tulisan. Ano yung tulisan? Ito yung rebel. Ito yung nag-start ng rebellion sa isang territory. So, Balat was decapitated because of his rebellion. When the grandmother witnessed this one, the grandmother died out of depression, out of sadness. Elias' father, punta tayo sa tatay ni Elias. Yung tatay ni Elias nagtrabaho para sa isang mayaman. Works for a rich man. And then that rich man has a daughter. Nagkaroon sila ng patagong relationship kasi nga yung tatay ni Rizal belong not in the middle or upper class of the society kasi nga worker lang naman siya. Patago yung relationship nila. Dito natin makikita yung mga relationship ni, ni Rizal kung saan almost uh, of almost of his relationships medyo are, are done. Are done in a stealth mode. Patago lahat. So yung rich man was not in favor of Elias' father. That's why yung tatay ni Elias pinadala sa kulungan. Punta tayo sa karakter ni Padre Damaso. Si Padre Damaso is represents the, the abuses of the friars in the society. So, ito yung madalas sa, pinap, uh, madalas sa ginagawa ni Padre Damaso on his homilies. So, madalas patamaan ni Padre Damaso uh, indirectly, indirectly si Ibarra in his homilies. According to Pedro, uh, Padre Damaso, though there are men, may mga tao daw na nakapag-aral sa ibang bansa. Tapos, nag-spread ng pernicious ideas among people. When I say pernicious, it suggests dangerous ideas. These are ideas that would cause oh, disunity among people. Ito yung way ni Padre Damaso to influence the public sa isang dinner na kung saan nandun si Ibarra at saka si Padre Damaso they were invited to eat together in, in a particular house hindi na iwasan ni Padre Damaso na insultihin yung tatay ni Ibarra o, tandaan natin si Padre Damaso was the responsible person kung bakit pinatapon ni Damaso ang tatay ni Ibarra na si Don Rafael sa lake so, it's a kind of disrespect dun sa tatay ni, ni Ibarra. Because of this, napunong si Ibarra 
And then there was an attempted murder done to Padre Damaso. And because of this, Ibarra was excommunicated. And then dahil nga sobrang influential ni Padre Damaso sa, sa ibang tao, sinadjust ni Padre Damaso to break the engagement of Maria Clara to Ibarra. And another significant character of, of Bizal in his no novel ay yung mag-asawang Tiburcio at saka si Victorina, Doña Victorina. So si Tiburcio de Espadaña was a quack physician. So ano yung quack physician? Ito yung albularyo. Si Doña Victorina represents the women of Filipina women. Uh, kasi when there was a time when Rizal was observing the women of the German a uh, German women. Napansin ni Rizal na exact opposite yung mga German women sa Filipino women. That's why he sent this observation to his sister Trinidad. You can still remember that slide. So dito niya siningit yung observation niya sa mga babae. Filipina at saka sa mga babae ng Germans. For Rizal, iba ang Filipina. For Rizal, ang mga babae during his time they are more interested on how they look physically, on how they appear to the public. Hindi sila masyadong interested on how they, they can develop their way of thought, on how they can develop their education. Kumpara sa mga Germans, wala silang pakialam kung anong magiging insura nila. So makikita natin yung similarity na yon under the character of Doña Victorina. Sobrang histrionic ni Doña Victorina. When I say histrionic, ibig sabihin nito, personality ito ng isang tao na kung saan ang gusto niya, yung attention niya ay sa kanya lang. So, hindi siya nakontento dun sa pangalan niya. Nilagyan pa niya ng titles. So, ibig sabihin, histrionic, may grandiose delusion personality si Doña Victorina. When I say grandiose delusion, yung pakiramdam niya siya yung superior individual sa ibang individuals. Ako yung pinakamatalino, ako yung pinakamayaman, pero this can only be seen sa panlabas lang, sa appearances. That's why this woman decided to put titles beside her name. Ganun din hanggang ngayon, may mga taong who are very conscious on titles. May PhD, may doktor, pero kung titingnan mo ngayon yung, yung substance ng pagkatao nila, wala kang makita ng substance. So, may doktora na, may donya pa. Hindi pa siya nakontento dun sa apelido niya. Dalawang delos, merong pang de, tapos meron pang de. Uh, itong delos tres, tsaka de, de espada niya, ibig sabihin nito na uh, lahian siya ng superior race ng Kastila. So, may grandiose delusion, superiority complex. Isa siyang superior na tao, ito yung delusion niya. Histrionic, ibig sabihin gusto niya lahat ng atensyon na sa kanya. Ito yung personality na nakikita ni Rizal sa mga karamihan ng mga babae. Karamihan ng mga babaeng Pilipina during... And this is the second time that Rizal or Elias had Rizal. There was an attack on the barracks. So, paano nagkaroon ng atake ng barracks? Barracks is a uh, command center or a headquarters of the Guardia Civil. So, may mga kalaban na si Ibarra. Enemies of Ibarra. Yung kalaban ni Ibarra, the mastermind of this... A uh, great plan informed the supposed attackers of the barracks. Kasi may mga ano na eh, may mga gusto nang umataka sa barracks. I think this pertains to this pertains to the attack of Bonifacio. If I would evaluate this one. The enemies of Ibarra, the mastermind of this great plan, informed the supposed attackers of the barracks. So may mga uh, mag-aatake na dapat sa barracks. So in inform yun ng mga kalaban ni Ibarra. Sinabi ng mga kala sinabi ng mastermind enemies of Ibarra that wait, wait for them to attack the barracks kasi ang head nila, ang leader nila is actually Ibarra. So if they're going to attack uh, the barracks, make sure that you have to include your leader, Ibarra. And then the enemies of Ibarra also inform the barracks. In informing yung barracks na magkakaroon ng atake magkakaroon ng atake na laban sa gobyerno. Tapos, uh, malalaman nila na ang leader na yon ay si Ibarra. So, nung inatake na to, inatake ng mga attackers na to, yung barracks, obviously nakapagplano na to, yung mga lieutenant, uh, ng mga guardia civil sa barracks. 
And then when they were captured, when they were captured, they asked kung sino yung leader. At obviously, yung sinabi nilang leader is Ibarra. Kasi nga, na plano na ng mastermind na to kung paano huliin si Ibarra. So Ibarra was captured. In other words, Ibarra was framed up. Ano ibig sabihin ng frame up? Na set up. Nagkaroon ng sabuatan dito at saka dito. So ganun ang dahilan kung paano nahuli si, si Ibarra. Elias help Ibarra escape. Pero ang 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 betrayal dito, betrayal of Ibarra was when Maria Clara betrayed Ibarra by sending some of the letters kasi may mga letters si si Ibarra, may mga letters si Ibarra papunta kay Maria Clara that would contain some of the sentiments of Ibarra against the Spanish government. So, walang choice si Maria Clara kundi isurrender yung letters na to kasi nga merong kapalit yan. Anong kapalit yan? Yung identity ng, ng tatay niya. If Maria Clara would surrender the letters, pag ibibigay ni Maria Clara yung letters dun sa lieutenant sa Guardia Civil, ang kapalit nun yung identity. Sino ba yung tunay na tatay ni Maria Clara? Hindi pala si Kapitan Thiago. Later on, malalaman natin na ang tunay na 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 <clears throat> tatay ni Mara Clara was is Padre Damaso. So nagkaroon ng pursuit, nagkaroon ng pursuit, ibig sabihin nagkaroon ng habulan nung pinat nung tinakas ni Elias si Ibarra nagkaroon ng habulan. Uh, but the authorities failed to capture recapture Ibarra because Elias made a diversion. So tinago ni Elias si Ibarra dun sa may bangka. Tapos si Elias tumalon sa bangka. Ang hinabol ng mga authorities ay si Elias. And then when Elias was able to escape, Elias met Basilio. Pero ang problema si Elias, inamaan. Inamaan ng bala coming from the Guardia Civils. Tapos doon na nilibing si Elias uh, together. Together with Crispin and the mother of Basilio. Isa. So this is the delusion delusion of grandeur. Ang tingin mo sa sarili mo superior pero actually hindi ka naman talaga superior. That's a problem of grand grandeur kasi nga grande, in grande, in grande yung tingin mo. Para do mo ikaw yung pinaka pogi, ikaw yung pinaka maganda sa vinyl pero hindi naman talaga that's a delusion of grandeur. This pertains to Doña Victorina. For Doña Victorino, Victorina She's a very superior individual and others were considered as inferior. Ang histrionic naman, ganito actually minsan yung pananamit niya. Kaya nga yung mga babae during Rizal's time, they are very much preoccupied on how they look, on how they appear in public. Medyo may pagka yung mga kababaihan that time. It's a personality disorder wherein uh, ang, ang center of attention parate, ang center of attention parate ay Uh, doon mismo sa tao. Stereonic, ibig sabihin ng stereonic, kakaiba manamit. Kakaiba manamit kasi ang gusto niya parate ay makuha to. Loves excitement and being the center of attention. No? Paano mo malang kukuha yung attention, obviously dapat mag-iba ka ng pananamit. Ganyan si Doña Victorina. So yung mga taong mahilig ng ganitong uh, manamit, it's a uh, personality disorder according to Rizal, which somehow explain being histrionic kasi nga gusto mong mapansin kakaiba nga yung pananamit mo gusto mong mapansin ng public kasi you like excitement and being the center of attention so ganun si Doña Victorina frame up may frame up pa rin ba ngayon meron pa rin yung frame up na nangyari kay Rizal hanggang ngayon meron pa rin merong tanim droga at merong nanlaban starter pa tanim droga ng mga kapulisan at mga nanlaban ang laban sa mga kapilisan para masabi sa public na the reason why they persecuted or executed the suspects because ito ang reason nila ng laban tapos magtatanong sila ng ebidensya na, na set up, na frame up ito yung ebidensya nila may similarity lahat nila ng baril ganito tapos yung, yung drugs meron pa yung tanim bala tanim bala sa airport so that's the overview of the Nolimetangere 